back to Pray, Read, Pray, where we pray, read God's word, and then we pray again. Today, we are on day 136 of the 365 Chronological Reading Plan. This consists of Psalms 3 and 4, 12 and 13, 28, hold on, let me see. <laughs> it's so small. Yeah, 28 and 55. So without further ado, let us pray. Lord God, I truly thank you for this amazing day. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for blessing us to see yet another day. I thank you for uh, being with us as we fellowship and commune with one another, Lord God. I ask that you sharpen our minds and open our hearts to receive your word. Lord, please forgive us of anything that is not like you and of you, Lord God. And Lord, we ask that you help us to remember your holy words so that we may share them, we may teach them, we may meditate on them day and night, Lord God. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all. So, I can lie to you. When the, you know, the back and forth between <laughs> Second Samuel Chronicles and Psalms come, I'm like, yes. It feels like a little break, like a little breath of fresh air. I almost make you feel like, yeah, the Bible should be read like this, right? Because I know for myself personally being transparent, when I'm trying to continuously read Second Samuel or First King or Chronicles, you know, I get I get distracted. Um my attention span is bare minimum at <laughs> the most anyway. So this kind of helps me say, okay, I look forward to the next day. But anyway, I am using the Inspired Faith Bible on today or any Inspired Bible would do. The main thing is this, I'm reading the New Living Translation or NLT. So without further ado, let us read. Psalm 3, a Psalm of David regarding the time David fled from his son Absalom. O oh Lord, I have so many enemies. So many are against me. So many are saying, God will never rescue him. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory, the one who holds up my head high. I cried out to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy mountain. I lay down and slept, yet I woke up in safety. For the Lord was watching over me. I am not afraid of 10,000 enemies who surround me on every side. Arise, O oh Lord, rescue me. My God, slap all my enemies in the face. Shatter the teeth of the wicked. Victory comes from you, O Lord. May you bless your people. Okay, so we obviously read about, you know, David fleeing from Absalom. And just like I said when we was reading that, like, I'm pretty sure there's a song related to this. And it is. Because David is one to cry out to God. Like, he didn't do anything else, no matter what he was going through, no matter who was after him. No matter who was considered his enemy, he talked to God. And not only did he just have a conversation with God, but he opened up his heart and he poured it out like, Lord, I'm scared. Lord, I'm worried. Lord, I'm fighting for my life. Lord, I'm fleeing. Lord, help me, Lord. And in, in the midst of him, you know, being scared and running and fighting for his life, he always came back to the most important thing, which is to give God glory. All right. Psalms 4. For the choir director, a Psalm of David to be accompanied by string instruments. Answer me when I call to you, O God who declares me innocent. Free me from my troubles. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you will you people ruin my reputation? How long will you make groundless accusations? How long will you continue your lies? You can be sure of this. The Lord set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will answer when I call to him. Don't sin by letting anger control you. Think about it overnight and remain silent. Offer sacrifices in the right spirit and trust the Lord. Many people say, who would show us better images? Let your face smile on us, Lord. You have given me greater joy than those who have abundant harvests of grain and new wine. In peace, I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, will keep me safe. We know that our safety, our security is in the Lord, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like. There's something about waiting that really conditions and prepares our mind and hearts. Like in the waiting season, we really learn to lean on God and to be mature in our walk and faith. And 
this is the, also the situation scenario where a lot of people fall off because I've been waiting for this long. I've been praying for this long. I've been going through this for this amount of time and they start to lose hope and faith. But we have to keep going and we have to keep pushing. All right, so the next song for today would be Psalms 12. So scoot on over a little bit. All right. For the choir director, a Psalm of David to be accompanied by an eight string instrument. Help, O Lord, for the godly are fast of disappearing. The faithful have vanished from the earth. Neighbors lie to each other, speaking with flattering lips and deceitful hearts. May the Lord cut off their flattering lips and silence their boastful tongues. They say, we will lie to our heart's content. Our lips are our own. Who can stop us? The Lord replies, I have seen violence done to the helpless, and I have heard the groans of the poor. Now I will rise up to rescue them, as they have longed for me to do. The Lord's promises are pure like silver refined in a furnace, purified seven times over. Therefore, Lord, we know you will protect the oppressed, preserving them forever from this lying generation, even though the wicked strut away and evil is praised throughout the land. So, another song. Did it say of David? I forgot. Yeah, Psalm David. <laughs> you know, you try not to assume because early on when I used to read the Bible as a kid, I'm like, they must all be by David. But no, there are some that are not. <laughs> but anywho, um, when you understand the Bible and read the Bible in order, it makes sense on to why this particular song actually came from him and then make, why another one may not or wasn't. But anyway, um, in this particular psalm, he is making note of how God views the poor. He is also making note of how, as human beings, how we do one another. You know, we quit to lie to one another and uh, deceive one another and, you know, flattering lips. We quit to do these things because we're human. We're in flesh. Um, but everything that the human is or could be in at a point of weakness in flesh, God is the contrary. God is holy. He is righteous. He speaks truth. He is pure. And he is pure all the way around. And this is why we look to him. This is why we acknowledge him and we focus on him because humans will fail you every single time, but God would not. So we put our faith, we put our trust in the Holy One who is our Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ. All right, next up on the list, we have Psalms 13. Like little baby songs, six verses. For the choir director, a psalm of David. O oh Lord, how long will you forget me forever? How long will you look the other way? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? Turn and answer me, O oh Lord my God. Restore the sparkle to my eyes, or I will die. Don't let my enemies gloat, saying we have defeated him. Don't let them rejoice at my downfall, but I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. Once again, David is just like any other human being. He starts out by venting, um, lamenting like, Lord, I feel like this. Lord, this seems like this. Like just pouring out his heart, being really vulnerable and transparent. And he's got a lot of questions for God. But he always does this. When he gets to the end of his uh prayer of uh, his song, but I trust in your unfailing love. So despite all of that he may feel or all that he may think is occurring, he comes back to the truth. And the truth of the matter is God is trustworthy. He is worthy to be trusted. His love is unfailing and we can rejoice in him because he will and he has rescued us over and over again. Sing to the Lord. That's where your help comes from. That's where your strength comes from. That is the center of your faith. Don't ever quit. Don't ever get up. No matter what you feel, no matter what it looks like. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, then we don't have time to look at how bad it is or how uncomfortable it may be. Focus on him. Next up, we have Psalms 28. So scooting over a little bit. Just a little bit. 
Psalms 28 is another very known psalm. A psalm of David. I pray to you, O Lord, my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. For if you are silent, I might as well give up and die. Listen to my prayer for mercy as I cry out to you for help. As I lift my hands toward your holy sanctuary, do not drag me away with the wicked, with those who do evil, those who speak friendly words to their neighbors while planning evil in their hearts. Give them the punishment they so richly deserve. Measure it out in proportion to their wickedness. Pay them back for all their evil deeds. Give them a taste of what they have done to, the, to others. They care nothing for what the Lord has done or for what he, his hands have made. So he will tear them down and they will never be rebuilt. Praise the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. The Lord gives his people strength. He is a safe fortress for his anointed king. Save your people. Bless Israel, your special possession. Lead them like a shepherd and carry them in your arms forever. And we do thank God for carrying us from day to day. But once again, we have a song where David is expressing himself. He wants those who are against him to perish. He wants them to suffer. And that's how we are. Like, we want people to pay for what they have done for us, right? But there's great reward and peace in letting, having the mindset that God will take care of my enemies or those who come against you or the God in you. Because we have to be careful about how much emphasis we put on ourselves because wickedness is against light. So if you have light, if you have the Holy Spirit within you, and which if you are saved and you believe you do, then this this battle, this war is so beyond who you are as a person, who that person is as a person or people. This is a spiritual war that goes on continuously. And we we should not forget that. And we need to, you know, think accordingly. In this particular song, we see that David is being very vulnerable. Like he has feelings he wants to express. And he's talking to God. He's being really truthful about how he feels. He wants to... He wants God to rise up against these enemies against of his. He wants God to do away with them. He wants them to feel pain and to be destroyed and, you know, go through. That's what he wants. And if we're honest, we have moments like that too. With like, this person has done this to me. I want to live to see them go through too. And oftentimes when we start thinking that way, once again, our eyes is off. Jesus. We have to focus on Jesus. God will take care of those who do you wrong. And he will do it with a just and mighty fist. But we are to continue to worship God, continue to praise him, and continue to keep our eyes on him because that's what matters. Next, last but not least, we have Psalms 55. Let me just scoot on over here. I try not to dwell too, too long, but it began good to me, y'all. Psalms 55. Uh -oh, did we stumble across? Not too bad. <laughs> Psalm 55. For the choir director, a psalm of David to be accompanied by string instruments. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my cry for help. Please listen and answer me, for I am overwhelmed by my troubles. My enemies shout at me, making loud and wicked threats. They bring trouble on me and angrily hunt me down. My heart pounds in my chest. <clears throat> Excuse me. The terror of death assaults me. Fear and trembling overwhelm me, and I can't stop shaking. Oh, that I had wings like a dove. Then I will fly away and rest. I will fly far away to the quiet of the wilderness. How quickly I would escape. Far from this wild storm of hatred. Confuse them, Lord, and frustrate their plans. For I see violence and conflict in the city. Its walls are patrolled day and night against invaders. But the real danger is wickedness within the city. Everything is falling apart. Threats and cheating are rampant in the streets. It is not an enemy who taunts me. I could bear that. It is not my foes who so arrogantly insult me. I could have hidden from that. Instead, it is you, my equal, my companion and close friend. 
What good fellow should we once enjoy as we walk together to the house of God? Let death stalk my enemies. Let the grave swallow them alive, for evil makes it home within me. But I will call on God, and the Lord will rescue me. Morning, noon, and night I cry out in my distress, and the Lord hears my voice. He rescues me and keeps me safe from the battle waged against me. Though many still oppose me, God who has ruled over ruled forever will hear me and humble them. For my enemies refuse to change their ways. They do not fear God. As for my companion, he betrayed his friends. He broke his promises. His words are as smooth as butter, but in his heart is war. His words are as soothing as lotion, but underneath are daggers. Give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. But you, O God, will send the wicked down to the pit of destruction. Murderers and liars will die young, but I am trusting you to save me. All right, so that was the ending of Psalms 56. Once again, it's another song of David. He is lamenting. He is expressing himself. And he's saying something very significant, something that always stood out to me, that he was having issues and trouble and it wasn't an enemy per se or a foe because those things are common and they make sense for those to, you know, do something against you, you know, hurt you, harm you, or try to defeat you and destroy you. But think about those who are close to you, friends, companions, these individuals who you look to for comfort, for conversation, for love and fellowship think about those individuals who turn against you or who may try to attack you whether physically or verbally you know falling out the things these are things that hurt and David was expressing that like this is what's hurting me this is what's a trouble to me because we don't expect this from the very people that we hold near and dear to our hearts but if you need to you know have some truth here for you, please understand that Satan may try to get you to feel like you're the only one that's going through this or everybody is against you. You're not the only one. This has happened to many, many others and will continue to happen to many, many others. And you also have to remember that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, that we all as Christians, if we're not careful, I do not believe Christians can be possessed but I do believe that we can be oppressed by Satan, meaning that some loophole, some opening has allowed Satan to come in and to manipulate, um, to confuse, um, to influence you. And oftentimes people don't believe it enough, but this could be through listening to false doctrine, um, listen to certain music, watch a certain television, um, hanging around certain people, being in wrong environment spaces. You have to take care of your soul like nobody's business. If we can understand that, hey, this body housed the Holy Spirit, what better way will we take care of ourselves through what we see and what we listen to? Because those things are a wave that go directly to your brain. And it can be so, so, so dangerous and so deadly if we're not careful. Focus on holy things. Focus on the things above. So yeah, be careful with your soul. All right, so that was the last Psalms in today's reading. Again, this was the reading of day 136. So talk to me in the comment section. Please don't forget to like this video so that it can circulate to someone else because we don't want to keep this to ourselves, of course. And of course, if you have not subscribed, please go ahead and do so. And comment down below. I talk back. I may not be on time. But I try my best to respond back to every single comment. Um, thank you so much, y'all. Stay tuned for day 137. I love you all. God bless. Take care. Bye.